Hello there, this is Ed McCarty. Welcome to Hoofing It Podcast with everything horses and livestock. Hello everyone, this is Melissa Cowan with Hoofing It Podcast. We are on location with Luann Debrick today at the Miami County Historical Museum in Paola, Kansas. Thank you for joining us today, Luann. Glad to be here. Luann, so we have a lot of history here with you, and I would like for you to tell our audience... Let's just start with when you were born, and let's talk about your um, candy route with your dad, but let's start first with your little bit of history about yourself. Okay. Um, I was born in 1934, so you can do the math. I'm 88 years old, and I lived all my life and was born in Paola, lived my life in Paola. Okay, so where did your, um, so where were you born in Paola? Oh, okay. Uh, Paola didn't have any kind of a hospital back then, and I actually was born in Kansas City at St. Luke's. Okay. Um, My mother died when I was born, and so my grandparents took me to raise, and um, my father was not in the picture for a number of years, and when I was about five years old, uh, he had uh, remarried, and... um, he wanted me back. So about the first real memory I have, I was probably four or five years old, is when the lawyers back then all came to the house and drew up the papers, which you see a lot of nowadays, but back then it wasn't, uh, you know, that wasn't heard of much. So I had, by court order, certain things that I had to do. And uh, one of them was uh, about once a month, I uh, had to uh, uh, go with my father, who lived at Ottawa, and spend the weekend. And he would come over at that point in time. The commercial candy company was here in Paola, uh, just down the street here. And he and Joe Balaka, who owned the commercial candy company, were good friends. And at that time, the area was broken up into uh, different areas where each candy company could sell, I guess you'd say. So my father would take the, um, he would come over from Ottawa. He would pick me up and we would go first uh, to, I think Rantoul was probably the first one we went to, and uh, deliver. He would deliver candy, and uh, I uh, loved going to the stores. You know, lots of food and things like that. And then we would go to Stanton, and we would end up at Pressonville, which was back up on 68 old 68 Highway. And then I would go home with him and spend a week and or the weekend Mm -hmm. and he would bring me back so that was our candy route and it was fun Um, the towns were very small Uh, I think Rantoul was probably about the biggest one the biggest one I love that store when I was a little girl yeah (laughs) well it uh, you know that wasn't very many stores but it was bigger uh, Stanton was about the same as Rantoul back then, and um, then we would go up to Pressonville. Now, Pressonville was my favorite because it was nothing but a filling station, and I don't remember any stores being in Pressonville. I'm sure there probably was, mm-hmm. but we always stopped at the filling station And uh, it was an interesting place because, especially in the winter, when it was cold weather, the uh, they had a big pot-bellied stove always burning in the middle of the store, and the men would come, the farmers, and Mm -hmm. they would sit around and tell tales and stories. And I think that was part of the McCaig family that uh, was here in Paola, the some of their relatives that ran that. And they lived in the back of the filling station. And uh, so Mrs. McCaig, I think that was her name, 
uh, would come and get me, and she'd say, you can't sit out here and listen to these stories these <laughs> men tell. She'd say, uh, you come back here with me. That and, was a good woman. Yes, very good. <laughs> they were all very friendly, all the stores that we went to, but she would feed me hot chocolate, and, you know, I loved to stop there. That was my favorite place. So um, that, uh, that was kind of the size of it. I don't remember how many stores or such I was I, you know I was only about five years old I guess somewhere along in there so but it was fun got to ride in the big truck that was big back then but yeah. it's you know about the size of I don't know uh, the Amazon trucks that run around oh, town yeah. now you yeah know, that that's makes about sense. as big as yeah. it was so and and then what kind of candies did you your dad having that truck well they didn't have any of this modern stuff you know mm -hmm. but gummy bears or anything like that but uh, they carried of course all the hershey's and all the different chocolate Yum. bars <laughs> uh, the zero bar was popular back then and uh, of course the what's the red one the the crackle one uh oh shoot well <laughs> anyway there were it was just really uh your major bars you know uh -huh. but then when we would get over to ottawa he had a, a wholesale uh store over there like the commercial candy company was here and there was always a big loader that uh, they would um, used there in the store and it had all the broken boxes of candy when they would you know so you get uh, them at a discount get, oh yeah well no charge just help oh yourself, help you yourself know. yeah so did you have a lot of candy growing up then yes, right and i don't care anything <laughs> about candy today so. and especially, I can't imagine. Cho especially chocolate i am not a chocolate lover so. oh my goodness i had enough of that growing up but, uh, oh wow that sounded like heaven to most kids you well, know well yeah it would have i'm um, sure and and it did to me back then you know but i had enough that, yeah. that was uh, but uh, oh golly that was about the extent of the candy well we did help there in the candy store in ottawa uh my uh, dad after he had remarried uh, they had adopted my stepmother's niece and uh, she and i were this well not exactly i was nine days older than she was and we had a lot of fun with that because people would ask us, you know, how old are you? Well, we were both the same age. And they'd look at you like twins. She was tall and slender <laughs> and blonde. And I was short and fat and brown. <laughs> and uh, we would well, have a lot of fun that. playing, yeah. you know, with that. And uh, You guys were close, though, right? Oh, yeah. Like you guys yeah, were? yeah, we stayed close all through the years. It was kind of a mixed up family mess but uh, i was so fortunate to be here with my grandparents yes. really you know and uh, such, well so the store it, did you say was owned that somebody bought that store it was called commercial candy but then commercial candy company was uh, yes was uh strictly candy and and the one that my dad started out with in ottawa was candy to begin with well then they began to branch out with uh, oh the toilet papers and the paper towels and and a lot of paper products and things like that but basically they started as uh, candy and of course the commercial candy company uh, most people around here it was uh, Cle eventually clemens and green okay and uh, then when my dad in ottawa retired Clemens bought him out, and so it all came back to Paola through oh Clemens my goodness. and Green. It just made a... Hey, Melissa, let's take a quick break. Thank you for joining us today. Our podcast is sponsored by... Better Equine. And Clinch Realty with Janet Turney. And, and now, now we're, we're back. back. So let's talk about your grandfather. You said you lived with your grandparents all your life, and you were blessed to be there. So let's chat with him about him for a moment. Very much so. He was quite a man. Um, he was, uh, um, well, I'll start out with his war years a little bit. Um, he was in the uh, Spanish-American War uh, just 
when they sent him to the border, not in the fighting. Uh, then he was in World War One and World War Two, wow. or no, 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 World War One. Then came the cavalry. When they came back from World War One, uh, he wanted to start a cavalry a group here in Paola, oh and goodness. so he petitioned at Topeka to do that, and they told they didn't want him to do it at first. They didn't think it was needed, so they told him that if he could could raise 30 people in 30 days, that they would uh, authorize him to have the cavalry, and he had 30 people in 10 days. Oh my said. goodness, that's awesome. So then he <laughs> was over the cavalry and then of course came the state guard and the national guard before he finally got out of all of it. He uh, started out at my memory, I know he worked out in the oil fields and stuff when he was younger, and um, but my memory was of the grocery store on the north side of the square in Paola. What was the name of that grocery store? That was called the T&M. His name was Tomlinson, Frank Tomlinson, and he and um, Mr. McNally, I think it was Boone McNally, they joined together and um, started this grocery store, which eventually um, was sold to the Sutherlands, which okay. everybody around here knows Sutherlands mm -hmm. Market, not Rex, but to his father. And then, of course, that went on to Rex Sutherland. My uh, granddad's sister uh, had been left standing at the altar, and so she had never oh my, married. Oh, my word. So she became the bookkeeper for this grocery store. And she always said she was sold along with the store every time it was sold. Oh. And she was still the bookkeeper towards the last when Rex Sutherland had the store. So oh, that is amazing. They, <laughs> she kinda, stayed with it, didn't she? Yeah, kind of <laughs> different. But um, I don't know just exactly when he got rid of that, but from the grocery store, um, he had the Western Auto, and um, then I guess that was, yeah, the end of that. Then uh, he became probate judge, and while he was probate judge, they started the county court, which he, they put them together, and he was judge of the probate court and the county court. And uh, all the while... From the time I was in junior high, he had developed cancer of the throat. And we had, uh, at one point in time, had gone to Barnes Hospital where they tried to remove half of his voice box. That was the first time they'd ever tried that. And that didn't really work. So he had a trek tube all the time. And when I was old enough to sew, I made the little... Uh, scarves that would you Aww, know tie around sweet. his neck and that's how he he on the whole time he was in probate judge he he couldn't talk unless he covered up the trek tube well did you so did he have the his court sessions here at this little courthouse and yes, on the square yes yes right inside when you go up the stairs it was the first uh, first big room on the right it didn't look like a courtroom by any means you know um, had a huge walk-in vault with all their files and everything, but he would marry people. He married a couple of my friends as we oh. got out of high school, you know. Did he marry you? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing he did, well, he was head of the um, school board when I graduated, so he got to give me my graduation uh, thing. Diploma, so your diploma, thought, that's yeah, so nice. He thought that was He did creamy. everything, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was active in, um, he was fire chief for 40 years. Oh my gosh. Um, of course 40 he, years? Yeah. So was I've, he a judge then too, at the same time? Yes, but see, that was all volunteer fire. Okay. And um, I think even this group down here, um, the firemen think that uh, Carl Dickey was the uh, fire chief. Because at that point in time, there was another grocery store on the west side of the square. And uh, 
Carl Dickey uh, worked there at that grocery store. So whenever they would have a fire, uh, the bell would ring, the light on the bank, the red light on the bank would go on, which probably nobody knows what that was for, but that <laughs> told the firemen which ward of the city, because communication was not good, you know. No, not in those days. And if they were out running around, they could look at that red light on the uh, side of the bank there and tell at least what ward the fire was at so they could head to that. But when the fire bell rang, uh, Carl Dickey would run across the park. Everybody remembers him. And he would grab the fire truck, which was right across the street here, and take out. And then, of course, all the rest of the volunteer firemen would join, you know, wow. as they got phone calls or whatever. So he did that for a long time. And, uh, of course, the Masons and, you know, Legion of the whole nine yards. So, but... He was uh, fascinating, he was wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really was. Um, Do you have a favorite moment with him? Well, you know, the strangest moment <laughs> was, um, I guess, well, probably in junior high. We were, I was in a car riding to a basketball game with a girlfriend and her family. Her parents were taking us at Kansas City. And her mother turned around to me and she said, Luann, I've always felt so sorry for you because you didn't have a normal childhood. Aww. And that just hit me like a ton of lead. And I thought, didn't I? I mean, I was spoiled rotten. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I guess you know? that's why it wasn't normal. I yeah. don't know. But anyway. It's it, funny uh, what other people see, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But uh, it was... Uh, you know, I didn't want for anything. I had so much fun running. I went everywhere with him because um, my grandmother was not well at all, and he had a lady that came and helped her. And so he took me with him, you oh, know, that's all the special. time. So I was in the stores that he ran and everything, so I knew an awful lot of the Paola people. Yeah, and, uh, so you have a lot of history in, up uh -huh. here. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, Luann, but. we have to close, but I just wanted to tell you again, thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to hearing more stories and You're gathering welcome. more history. Enjoyed it. Subscribe with us to follow our podcast, and please provide a review. We appreciate your positive feedback, which enables us to provide our free podcast to you. You can find links to the website at ehalnews.com. Music provided by Ed Mahan. Copyrights by Everything Horses and Livestock.